Hello, in this video, we're going to talk about hormones of fluid balance or fluid homeostasis. Three hormones mediate physiological adjustments in fluid balance and electrolyte balance. These are aldosterone, antidiuretic hormone, also known as arginine vasopressin, and the natriuretic peptides, ANP and BNP. These hormones are released from endocrine organs or glands and travel in blood. The main source of water is from the gastrointestinal tract when we drink. The main way we secrete fluid is through urine. These hormones that maintain fluid balance mainly affect the kidneys. And so we need to revise the functional unit of the kidneys, which are the nephrons, where these hormones act on. Here is the nephron. The head of the nephron is the Bowman's capsule. Here is the proximal convoluted tubules, the loop of Henle the distal convoluted tubules, and the collecting duct. Fluid enters the head of the nephron via the afferent artery and forms the glomerulus. The glomerulus then exits the Bowman's capsules to form the vasorecta, here in orange, which secretes and reabsorbs solutes along the renal tubule. So starting from the head of the nephron, water gets filtered through. Water in the tube of the nephron gets reabsorbed mainly in the proximal convoluted tubule through aquaporin type 1 channels. This is 90% of the water. The remaining 10% is at the distal convoluted tubules and the collecting duct, which is primarily driven by the hormone ADH. This 10% is reabsorbed back into circulation via aquaporin type 2 channels, which are primarily driven by the hormone ADH. So where does ADH come from? Well, ADH is secreted by the posterior pituitary gland. However, ADH is actually produced by the hypothalamus in response to an increase in plasma osmolarity or a decrease in blood volume. An increase in plasma osmolarity basically means when you have high solute levels in the blood in respect to water. Sodium is a strong stimulant here. If sodium levels are high and if the blood volume is low, it will stimulate the hypothalamus to produce ADH, which will then travel to the posterior pituitary to be released into circulation. ADH is also known as arginine vasopressin. ADH travels to the nephron, to the distal convoluted tubes and the collecting duct where it will stimulate the expression of aquaporin type 2 channels to reabsorb more water back into circulation. In summary, ADH targets the distal convoluted tubules and the collecting ducts of the nephron. It increases aquaporin type 2 channels, which increases water reabsorption and so increases fluid volume and also decreases plasma osmolarity. ADH also has an effect on peripheral resistance. There are ADH receptors on blood vessels. When ADH binds, it can cause vasoconstriction, which increases peripheral resistance, and so can increase blood pressure. However, ADH role in vasoconstriction is mainly during a lot of blood loss. The next hormone which is important in maintaining blood volume fluid homeostasis is aldosterone, a mineral corticoid which is released by the adrenal cortex of the adrenal gland. How does aldosterone get released and what does it do? When you have low blood volume or low blood pressure, it will stimulate the renin angiotensin aldosterone system, or RAS for short. RAS stimulates essentially will lead to the stimulation of aldosterone from the adrenal cortex. Hyperkalemia high potassium levels and low serum sodium levels can also directly stimulate aldosterone release into circulation. Aldosterone is a corticoid and thus binds onto a trans transport protein uh, in circulation, mainly albumin, but also transcortin, a protein also produced by the liver. Aldosterone travels to the distal convoluted tubule of the nephron. Here it increases the expression of ENAC and sodium potassium ATPase pumps. What this means is that aldosterone will essentially result in the reuptake of sodium 
from the nephron tubule into circulation. And as a general rule, water will follow sodium. And so you, you increase the reabsorption of water as well. So in summary, aldosterone targets distal convoluted tubules where it will increase ENAC channels and sodium potassium ATPase, which will lead to sodium reabsorption and therefore water retention, which will increase fluid volume and also decrease serum potassium at the same time. The final hormone in maintaining blood volume and fluid homeostasis is the natriuretic peptides, which have the opposite effects of ADH and of aldosterone. The natriuretic peptides are released by the heart, specifically the atrium and the ventricle. Natriuretic peptides have opposite effects of ADH and aldosterone, and so the trigger of its release differs. High blood pressure and high blood volume will cause stretching of the heart wall, which will trigger the release of ANP and BNP. ANP and BNP are your natriuretic peptides, and they will inhibit the activity of aldosterone. And they will do this in a few ways. One, they will decrease sympathetic activity, which will inhibit essentially the release of renin and so will inhibit the renin angiotensin aldosterone system altogether. Natriuretic peptides also cause afferent arterial vasodilation, which will increase glomerular filtration rate. When you increase the glomerular filtration rate, this will tell the juxtaglomerular cells at the head of the nephron to stop releasing renin, and so will it inhibit the renin angiotensin aldosterone system altogether as well. Finally, the natriuretic peptides also have a role in blood vessels. It has the opposite effect to the antidiuretic hormone. The natriuretic peptide binds onto natriuretic peptide receptors on vessels, causing vasodilation, which will lead to a reduction in peripheral resistance, which means it will also decrease blood pressure.